Uh, I, uh, I'm going to tell you some stories today about uh, gaming and uh, why gaming matters to me and uh, what role gaming has played in my life. And not just the kind of gaming that we do, also the kind of gaming that normal people do. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I mean, I mean <laughs> my wife describes herself as being nerd adjacent. <laughs> doesn't play Small World, uh, but does play Scrabble. And uh, uh, though we approach these games with uh, equal passion, um, near the twain shall meet, mostly because I just suck at Scrabble. <laughs> I'm actually going to tell you a story about that today. Uh, before I start uh, telling stories, uh, I wanted to say a, co a couple of, of things. Um, uh, it's been a terrible allergy week for me in Los Angeles. The sycamore tree next door to me had not been uh, trimmed in 40 years and uh, they decided to trim it. And it turns out that I'm allergic to whatever is inside that tree from 40 years ago. And uh, somewhere between there on Monday and here this morning, uh, I got a sinus infection. So, uh, yeah, awesome. Uh, so it's, it's great that I came to Gen Con, like pre-con credit. <laughs> super fantastic. Uh, so, uh, if, uh, if, if I have to turn away from the mic and, and, and collapse on the ground in a coughing fit, uh, it's totally normal, it will pass. <laughs> you know, I'm nervous, it's okay. Um, I, uh, I just wanted to say that uh, there are a lot of things that make me a nerd. And uh, when I look at all of the things that make me a nerd kind of laid out together, um, nothing is uh, more important to me and nothing has played a bigger role in creation of, uh, of my personal identity, the naming. And I wanted to just say thank you to everyone who has designed games, and play tested games, and sold games, and been an advocate for games, and all of the gamers who go out and sort of spread what we do uh, to uh, other people that keep our hobby strong, that make it profitable, and make it a, a worthwhile investment of time and energy for other designers to make other games so that future generations will go through that crucible of junior and senior high school like a lot of us did, and know that there is this other thing for those of us that are weird and weak and strange uh, uh, that, uh, that we can do, that we can hold on to. Um, it has meant more to me than I can, uh, than I can adequately describe to be able to uh, disappear into Ferelden for a while, or uh, go and, and, uh, and, and, and put together my berserk elves, for example. Um, and uh, uh, I've been very fortunate. I've gotten to meet a lot of people in the gaming industry uh, in the last uh, few years of my life. And uh, um, if not for Steve Jackson games, which played an enormous, enormous role in high school, right? We were all about Illuminati and Car Wars and GURPS. Uh, it, was my, it, was my, it, was, uh, it was it was my fandom for Steve Jackson games and my incessant uh, like talking about it when my blog first started that led me to meet uh, Andrew Hacker, who is uh, known to a lot of people as the Munchkin Czar. Um, Andrew has become one of my best friends in the world and has edited everything I've ever written. And has been knowing Andrew has been one of the greatest creative partnerships of my life. And uh, it all came from gaming. From my friend Caius telling me, oh, you gotta play this game with Illuminati, it's really fun. You use orbital mind control lasers to get the Girl Scouts to control the NRA. <laughs> So, um, now, on to the, the storytelling. Um, every year before I go out to these summer conventions, uh, I go through whatever I plan to release in the fall, and I uh, pull out some previews, and uh, I put together these little, like, uh, super lo-fi, uh, like, old-style, uh, like, super ghetto chapbooks. Um, I, uh, I used to just sort of throw a bunch of stuff into open office and then take it to a print shop. Uh, and then my friend Will was like, you know, I'm a designer, I can make that look good for you. Uh, and I was like, really? Okay, that'll be new. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and I put these things together. Uh, and um, uh, because it's the first time I've ever been to Gen Con, I thought it would be cool if I went through all the stuff that I've written over the last few years and pull out a bunch of stories about gaming. And uh, I put together this little chapbook called Games Matter uh, that, uh, that Andrew edited and Will designed. And there are different stories in here about being a gamer. And uh, I 
have, uh, I have 200 of these with me um, in, well, I have one of them with me, and I have 99 of them uh, in the other room. And uh, anyway, uh, these are available if you, if you sort of want them, so let's see, I have a set list here. Um, uh, in, the, uh, in the other room, in the main, I think it's, what's that room called? You know, where all the dealers are. Um, yeah, that. <laughs> oh, and before I start, uh, I should say that uh, what I'm going to do today um, is, uh, is released under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial uh, Share-Alike License. Uh, so Damn. if you know what that means, Damn. use it. If you, don't what that, if you don't know what that means, uh, ask the nearest nerd. Uh, it's probably sitting next to you. Right? Uh, and uh, uh, I, I do my best to sort of uh, keep keep these things PG-13, um, but uh, sometimes I forget to edit um, words uh, from the page through my mouth when I read them, so I apologize in advance for those of you who are offended uh, by, by naughty talk. Uh, <laughs> but but uh, I, I'll do the best. And really, if you're offended by naughty talk, you don't want to sit down and play any kind of RPGs with me. Uh, <laughs> And then an issue a stream of obscenities that to this day. My name is over Seattle. What a magnificent tapestry of fuck you, Scott Burns. <laughs> Go get him, Aofel. Go get him. He wronged my family. Well, okay, I'm an Avenger. That's what I do. I sure hope there's not an acid pit between him and the door that I'm going to fall into. And I really hope that when I fall into the acid pit, you guys don't stay there in the fucking chest trying to get the armor for six <laughs> Some guy was like, never split the party! To which I responded, never met a game! I've got to work myself up. <laughs> so, this was originally written October 11th, 2009, uh, and it's called Gaming Monkey. Uh, uh, oh, cast of characters. Anne is my wife. Ryan is my uh, older uh, son. Nolan is my younger son. That's what she means. I'm Will. I'm your hero. <laughs> but hello. <laughs> While Anne and I drove down the freeway today, The Cure's Just Like Heaven came on the radio. This is my first CD, I said. I know, she said, you tell me that every time we hear a song. <laughs> well, one day you'll hear it, and I won't be here for some reason or another and you'll wish that I was here to tell you. <laughs> well, we both pondered the macabre nature of that particular album. <laughs> I realized that not only was this album forever linked to my first CD player, but it also gave me these hyper-nostalgic memories of gaming with my group of friends in high school. I don't know what it is, I said, but lately I have wanted to get together with geeks and do just a weekend of serious, non-stop gaming. That's why you're here. Thank Apparently you. on October 11th, 2009, I was looking forward to today. <laughs> Even though I knew I was, I could really feel like myself getting sick last night, my, uh, uh, Chris Promise and, and, and Nicole Lunas are friends of mine, and, and Chris uh, was one of the designers of the Dragon Age RPG, which has a super magnificent, awesomely wonderful system. Chris for months, every time we're in the same place, he's like, run Dragon Age for me. He's like, I'd love to, but I have a thousand other things to do. And uh, last night, um, I got to play Dragon Age RPG for the first time. And uh, God, it's so much fun. It's so much fun, especially if you've played the video game, because then you get to sort of make um, out-of-game comments about how uh, now you're covered with even more blood. <laughs> Okay, sorry. Um, I don't know what it is I said, but lately I've wanted to get together with geeks and do a weekend of serious non-stop gaming. She glanced over at me. Oh. Yeah, but this is more than that usual, like, I want to go play Car Wars thing. This is a serious... I searched for the exact word to describe the overwhelming longing, approaching psychophysical need to play. And I settled on... It's like Jones. <laughs> like an addict, you know? 
I wheeled around in my seat and I faced her. You know, it's like there's, um, aren't we getting on the 110? Oh, whoops, she said as she quickly changed lanes. It's like there's a monkey on my back. A gaming monkey. And he's rattling these dice. <laughs> Oh, you mean like she's shaking them in a Yahtzee cup? She said. <laughs> Gamers don't use Yahtzee cups. I said, as patiently as I could. Now, it's more like he's holding a bag of dice in his hand. I held my hand up and I felt the invisible bag in my palm. And he's just like rattling the dice around. Is it your bag of dice? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is totally my bag of dice. <laughs> I paused for a moment and I added, but he's not opening. Because if he opens it and touches my dice, I will fucking kill him. <laughs>